top four. Unfortunately, it didn't happen, so we got uh, sixth place instead. That's okay. We'll get him next time, guys. We'll get him next time. Sorry for the delay talking back to you guys. Obviously, ESL Open Cups do require a two-minute delay. They also require the ESL logo, which I should probably put on stream. Give me a second, guys. Do, 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 do. My bad. That's also a uh, culprit of the new PC. There you go. Alrighty, so. In the bottom right, it is Hero, and the top left, it is Bunny. Put the scoreboard up and everything. We do have a Proby. Coming across the map, I'm going to play the Nibbly game with an SCV for a couple of moments, so a little bit of damage going to be done right there. Let's just get set up. Frax on the way up. The gateway is coming through. A probe is very nearly going to get that SCV. He really wanted it. He really, really, really wanted it, but not D at the end of the day. Well, Probe will stick around. Probe actually, of course, does win these fights. Just the regen on the Probe shields really does help. They can come back in, harass again. Just be an absolute frustration, right? Is, is what it's really good at, so... It will do very well that. Let's just see the Probe still trying to just net a kill. Obviously, some repairs will come down. That's where the SCVs can fight back. This early game skirmishes. A little bit more intriguing than initially expected, I'm not going to lie. Let's just have our... We were popping back out the front. We have the SCV going to build a bunker even, so Bunny will be prepared defensively for a little bit. And we'll just sit nice and safely for a little while. Other guns coming up. The Nexus is just about to finish here. Warp Gate's still coming through. Need to get that. Twilight up in the back is the tech tree is chosen from Hero, so he wants to move in towards that Twilight Council, so we know roughly what Hero is now aiming for. A factory coming up, and it's that all the commands coming online. Stop on the way. And yeah, kind of just expecting a Widow Mine drop. That really is the most common, the most stable way to open up in this TVP. And that does seem to be how we plan to get into things for the moment here. Let's go, Dohi, how you doing? Thank you so much for the 27-month uh, resub. Welcome back. Thank you so much for supporting. Really, really appreciate it. As a stalker, we'll uh, chase that Reaper around for just a little bit here, so... Hunting around for a little bit, and Niven, how you doing? Thank you so much for the five years down. Five year reset, thank you so much. Thanks for your due. Thanks so much for uh, supporting it and watching it. I already said it once a little bit earlier, but uh, yeah, if you are uh, here today, tuning in, watching, subbing, and I super appreciate you because it's, it's always tough to kind of do the first few streams back after being away a little bit. And I uh, appreciate you guys' support even when we're not streaming as many hours and everything. And it is going to be, February is just not going to be a great month. The start of March, I'm going to be away until halfway through as well. But after that, I promise we'll be back and we'll be streaming a whole bunch more SC2. Uh, doing as much as we possibly can. It's going to be busy, busy, busy. We're going to do, like I say, really as much as we can. As the Widow Mine Drop got caught. So yeah. Just a slow start to this uh, this year post Katowice. But uh, we will, like I say, get back on track. The mind drop does get a stalker, man. For the, you know, from going from being a bad die to actually getting a stalker kill out of this is pretty darn impressive. That's really nothing to scoff at. That's that's very impressive indeed. So that's really cool. So good job there. Stim pack is going to begin. So we get that started up. Also, right now we get that underways. Marines gonna go after the Marines. Gonna go in. 
I mean, the Stalker is obviously good to harass, and they force an SCV pull as well, so definitely goes a long way. I mean, this is sort of what you want to be getting done. I think the SCV stopped to repair up the medevac, though, as well. That's cute. Nothing in the bunker, though, so no defense there, unfortunately, is going to be a little bit costly. Okay, that is going to be a little bit costly. Our Stalkers get a few more SCVs. And able to stick around that little bit longer hero continue to go one way than the other fortune robo bay before we take an expansion so we're really going to double down on this uh two basing for the moment right really going to be very safe and secure with the tech before we go anywhere else with this game blink up into the main base marauder will go down actually i think it was saved into the medevac but then the medevac went down instead so even worse really for bunny because then you lose a medevac out of this and he's still losing SEVs here he needs stim, he needs combat shields, he needs these upgrades, but he needs to get to those upgrades without being dead already. And right now, I'm not sure that is really much of a reality. We have a drop across the map, but if stim's not done, that drop isn't even really at full strength, and I don't even love that either. Recall back, this army gets over here. It's gonna be seeing the medevac still getting poked around. Pushed away up that right hand side, stim pack, combat shield, and the plus one continue to come into play. Once those all finish up here from Bunny, we will have, again, a much better situation, but I just don't know if it's going to be enough. Using Widow Mines at the front now as well, because the Observer provides the vision, the Stalkers have the range. This just feels like every step is a step in the wrong direction, unfortunately, here for Bunny. Which is a little bit rough as our Bayouns continue over. Stalker will get picked off right there as well. Nice little grab. I love this too, the prism just going to be providing another direction of attack, right? Somewhere else to just kind of move in and deal some damage. Nice to, uh, nice to see. Nix is still just coming through. we got a couple more barracks looking to come up as well, so we really do try to keep all of that coming online as we just have Extra racks continue to come in for the moment here. Again, a little bit of something on the goes. Let me see our army coming up the right hand side. I mean, I feel like with so much damage taken as Bunny, this is almost an impossible defense because you can never get to the Colossus, right? You just don't have the numbers to fight the gateway units. And if you play defensively in the gateway units, it might be fine, but with the Colossus just whacking away behind, there's just almost no way. GG's and Hero is going to be your 1 0 leader in this best of three, so we take the best we can. And like I say, try and keep you guys as up to date with that as we can do. It is Hero in the bottom right hand side, he's our red Protoss player, still wrapping that Dragon Kaizi banner. In the top left, our blue Terran is Bunny. Game pause. He is going to ask for a pause. PPP. I always find it funny when you have uh, the players from like the Pro League days, such as Bunny, he was on CG Entis back then. And, uh, you know, these guys from, from the Pro League days, they were taught you had to p type PPP -P -P because it wasn't actually please pause, it was like please press pause because you actually had the referee had to be the one to pause. Like the player was not allowed to pause themselves. I always thought that was a very interesting, uh, very interesting little dynamic. Oh, just wait a few moments here, not sure obviously what the issue is, seems to be something, I imagine just maybe someone's at the door or something to that effect. We'll just take a few moments for this to sort itself out though, no problems. Bunny saying sorry, go go, we can go go bunny. This is going to be Inu to resume us. Game resumed. And we have Bunny on the top left hand side, is where I believe we were at in terms of introductions. Alrighty, so. With that all uh, out of the way, a little pause action done with, dealt with. We get to go back into this best of three again. It's a 1 0 lead for Hero. 
If you're just tuning in right now, Hero really stalked his way to victory in game number one. It was very convincing. It was very comfortable from him. He really got the job done. And as they are probably going to nibble up on a couple of SCVs. And well, those SCVs just trying to get the barracks up. Very similar to last game. The probe was annoying last game as well. It was up in your face right from the get-go. Try and get that probe back across. SCV takes a few more nibbles. Now this SCV going to push that probe away. So probe does get chased out of there for the moment. SCV is going to go nibbling around. Probe will take a little bit more damage. Very nearly goes down, but just about able to escape away for the moment. And then getting set up. We're just going to be having that probe really set back in the corner there. So again, just chilling for a few moments here. Uh, I just wanted to do stuff like this, right? Coming back in, being annoyance. Everybody's here, though, so this means the probe has given itself up. Maybe it would have been better to hide the probe a few more moments and then reveal once the Reaper is likely to have gone out on the map if it was going to go out at all. Now we have our first adept going to move out to the low ground and beyond, moving into the center. Heading through the middle into the upper left-hand side. Robotics facility starts up on the side of Hero as well. And our Nexus about to finish just as it is ahead of the Terrence Command Center. No surprises on that one. Those timings are very regular for TVP. That's the Marine's going to hit away at the Adept. We have one Marine that's going to have to jump back into that bunker, and the CV did not pull away. Got greedy trying to finish up the Command Center. Could have pulled away, let the other one finish it on the other side. Maybe would have saved that SCV, but... One SDV is, is far from, you know, super game ending or anything. Obviously, it's nice to keep it alive if you can, but let's not get too hung up about its loss. Because these two adepts will still try and deny mining with the mule here as well. It's a fairly significant portion of mining being lost. We send the mule to the high ground, which I like. Instead of just waiting out these adepts, what if they don't shade back there, right? And then you've got a mule still not mining for even longer, so just send it back up into the main base. Just minimize your... You know, mining losses essentially. It's already not great for you. Because if you have the robot and the follow up and hero, then the Twilight Council. Here's one of the few pros players that's been doing this fairly consistently where you get that robot up early and then just kind of playing from there. This is not really something that Max Pax does. This really is like a hero thing. So, you're finding that very interesting too. And then the Reaper gets a grenade off and hits that Stalker around. We're going to go all the way around the bottom right now and just going to move all the way in this direction. We still have the stalker coming in to chase. And the Reaper for a few more moments will be kept away from all of this as we have the prism heading toward the main base. It comes come straight on through here. A couple of lock-ons trying to help out. Yeah, the stalker. And try and fight, but with the cyclone here, it's going to be quite difficult to get too much done. And go chase and actually that's a good lock on to the prism can we kill the cyclone in time i don't think so right oh come on it got away to the south Get into that dead airspace of all places too so it actually can get away good job by the prism as that was obviously very dangerous for it now this medevac is trying to play the getaway game and it just about gets away that was a fun set of micro a fight back and forth on both sides and in the end it is going to be hero who is able to stay cool i made it out alive we have our Robo Philly still going up. The Blink is coming through. It's about halfway done. Immortal, Robo Bay, Forge, bit of everything still coming through in that regard. We have our CC on the way in the main. So we're going to get the three bases. Obviously, Hero is on his way to Blink. It's a much later Blink. This prism took its kind of place for the harassment choices early on. Raven's still hanging out. A few stalkers, a couple of adepts, and the prison making their way across to the other side. Well, just do get a clean up there, and that's going to be nice as the prison goes in. A couple of mortals drop down. Keep boys, but you got to be careful. Also, you can matrix that prison. 
And then these immortals are stuck. First one goes down. I think the recall is good to save the second, but... Yeah, I was, I was looking at the Raven, I was like, I think you can get it if the prism goes too far away. The problem is if you shoot the Matrix too close to the prism, or when the prism's too close, it can lift the immortals up before it runs, or before the Matrix hits. So then you don't really kind of gain anything. The moment the prism moves a step further away, Matrix goes out, we guarantee ourselves the mortal kill. That's a great start, however, these Stalkers are still packing a punch. The drop comes back here from Bunny, losing his Raven now as well. He has low ground Marines. The Medivac goes down as well, though. Man, so many expensive losses. That's a lot of tech that ends up being kind of just taken out here. As I extended Thermal Lens, that plus one attack upgrade. That continues to come through, and you have the Immortal firing onto the bunker. Really wants to try and clean that out. Impact, combat shield, plus one attack, bit of everything continues through. The Medivex, Marines and Marauders are coming in, the Widow Mines are in production as well. So units just popping through, there's a couple more Widow Mines coming out of that factory. We do have sentries on the way in, so a couple more sentries are going to come by as well. Is coming through. Still got our plus one. Still got excellent thermal lance coming by. The orbital is going to go land onto the low ground. And that third base position set up here. Nice really shot here. He's going to get the uh, grab on a stalker. Is Bunny in an okay enough position? I would say he's alright, right? I mean, he's 57 SCVs to 62 probes. His army is looking fine. It was scary. I feel like a lot of these trades were pretty darn good for Hero, and it started to get to that point again where you're like, well, was it too much? I think in the end it was okay. Stuff like losing the Raven was kind of sad. Uh, but being able to grab an Immortal, he's killed two Observers. These Robo units he's been grabbing really have found a lot of value. Now, Hero has safely transitioned through to Colossi. The bunny is a step on that. You know, he's already building some Vikings. He's got two out, two more on the way. These are things which will go a long way for him. I was going to say, yeah, extend the lens is finished as we make our way to Wood Warp Prism speed. Going to give that gravitic drive a chance to get the Prism into some more exciting locations and perhaps have some exciting uh, plays. So be watching out for how that all goes. As the Prism needs to move around, a few more orders and Marines. Going to go down to the bottom side. Vex is going to load up, back away for the moment. Going to have a good drop here as Hero is not in position straight away and is going to try to knock his way through this base. So this dam uh, damage being done, position being taken. Get a few shots off initially. Zard's coming by, just going to push the Zard force away there, so still just chasing that around for a little bit longer. Now we're dropping the main base, I mean, this is where Bunny can do very well for himself. This is where Bunny is so good at just kind of stretching out a game in his favor, right? Just being aggressive in multiple locations, being very active. I like this for him, he's going to get three more probes here. Zelts and Stalkers finally getting the cleanup. It's a big distraction too, because time is always your friend as a turn play in these scenarios. Time typically for you gives you the tech you need to take a fight, whereas the Protoss usually already has the tech they want to fight with. So, oh, Prism. No, oh, it doesn't take the final shot. Colossus though already taking a beat, and this is not a good position for Hero. This is one of those times where you're like, haha, I'm going to come out in the middle of the map and scare him, and Bunny's like, well, I'm not scared. You know, Th these things, these kind of moves are the sort of moves Hero makes a lot of, but they just don't work if your opponent has a leg up on you, and he does have that step ahead on Hero, does Bunny, and now especially Hero losing some probes, he's going to be down in workers, playing against his three base Terran, whose only real kind of hindrance is that the fourth isn't on location, if that gets in place, then Bunny is really running away with this position in the game. He's out going to show up on that right hand side, but he probably just pulls back to deal with that. It's a good amount of Zelts, about 20 supplies worth. So you just can't justify letting those wreak havoc when you're not even halfway across the map. So he does pull back even better if he can get a kill on them. He is intercepting them on the right hand side, gets a catch. And still a few to chase. He will not kill too many. Hero still has the exit to the upper right. Now he's going to try and use these Zelts to drag his opponent while moving forward with the main army. 
Well, Bunny's actually going to split into two portions. He's going to play the top side, he's going to play the bottom side. And with these two portions of the army, he may look to pincer in on a hero, should hero get aggressive. The slash damage cannot shoot in every single direction, right? As this disruptor shot will be good for the Widow Mines, but that means the disruptor's on cooldown. Oh, this is not going to be an attack from multiple angles as I sort of thought it might be. The Vikings, though, will get rid of the Colossi quickly. And the Disruptor was on cooldown, right? This Disruptor shot, though, runs for a couple of Marines. And more than anything, it makes you step back a second as the Terran. However, now we're chasing through. And we still have the important tech units in the front here in trouble. Disruptor will go down the Colossus as well. Hero, I don't think, is going to survive through this attack unless a Disruptor shot is going to find some absolute magic here. It's still just Disruptors in production. No more Colossus for those Vikings. A little bit of dead weight, they could land to join in the fight. The question is, you know, if you're worried about what's being built, you don't know if it's Colossi or another Disruptor. If it's a Colossus and you've landed your Vikings, that ain't good for you, right? I think in this case, you just land them because, well, realistically, you just want DPS right now. Disruptor Shot's going to be able to get a few of them, but even taking the Disruptor Shot attention is decent. Somehow, some way, this a gateway force is going to hang on in there and push this back. Was that the plus two attack upgrade making all of that difference? That was... I guess a good surround of zealots, and they really got to just stand there and fight for a while. And that is, in the end, enough for Hero to push Bunny away for the moment. This game will, you know, endeavor to go on. Well, that was, uh, not really expecting Hero to survive that one, but he did have the zealots really cuddling that army, and zealots getting the chance to just sit there in melee are almost always going to be a, a big success story, right? And the zealots come charging through. A ghost gets chased down. Stalkers continue to blink in after the medevac Viking. He's going to be hunted down as well. One shot's going off. Liberate is firing up. Disruptor's taking some hits. And the disruptor shot comes through. A little bit more bio goes down. The Viking is well knocked away at here. So we have Libs, Marines, Marauders, Wooder Mines, bit of everything still on the way up on the side of Bunny. Bringing up as much of that as we possibly can. Zelt, Stalkers, and Disruptors coming by as well. And I'm going to see the Liberator sieging up from afar. The Libs get sieged up one more time here. And again, we've got our army coming back over to that left hand side. so funny because I feel like Hero's army sucks. <laughs> I mean, he does have the disruptors to protect him, but if, if Bunny can pincer from two sides and dodge the first, you know, if he can force two disruptor shots at once and dodge him, he should be rolling. And, and that's the thing, if you come from two angles, then Hero can't just fire one disruptor shot to get away. You have to fire the second, and then you don't have that continuous kind of momentum of disruptor shot, disruptor shot, because you don't have enough disruptor shots to fire two at a time all the time. He's getting there. Four disruptors is, you know, what you need to consistently fire. So in two directions, you just double that to eight. And it's not easy for Bunny to find the trigger to pull when it comes to just being like, ah, you know what, let's just stim into all these disruptors, right? That's still a, a scary decision to make. That's that scare, kind of fear of it, which is maybe keeping him from doing something, although Hero is still positioned to poison himself so aggressively. Oh, here we go from the bottom side as well. Bunny is going to come through. There's those disruptors from two different angles. Like I say, that just gives you that edge where now the disruptors, more of them having to be used, and then they're on cooldown, then you get the chase, and if the disruptors are in the back because they were firing to save the rest of this army, then they get punished hard. Five, six disruptors going down here. Zealots fighting into a choke will not be pretty either. It's the worst position for Hero to ever turn around with the gateway forces. That's the last disruptor shot for the moment. He built Colossi behind this, so no new disruptors. And knowing that it's Colossi, we start up Vikings once again, but Bunny taking a huge win here. Again, he did what he needed to. Multiple angles, forcing multiple disruptors to come on out. That really made a big difference. We're just going to leave the lip at the anti-air fire. Colossi taking shots. Now the Libs will siege. Going to zone the Colossi up the left-hand side. We might just chase up here with this bio force. I do not think we respect this army of Hero right now, and I don't think we see why we should. Zealot's going to come in from the other side. They are going to do okay. Yeah, running through this has been expensive, but we've just still got a few units left. Can we get rid of the Colossi? We're probably going to have to fight with the Col uh, Liberators. We want a chance of that, which means just run to the other side of them and force the Colossi to run through. There's not a lot of Stalkers right now, and any expense on Stalkers is money that really would have preferred to have been spent elsewhere. As we see the Stalkers blink through the Colossi, 
will still be in Liberation Zones. One of them going down. This game is falling apart completely from Hero. This one does not have a lot of life left in it. We are going to go to Game 3 as Bunny. Had a solid game here this time around. He was good defensively early, took some good fights. And Hero did a lot of cool things to kind of try and keep himself in it. And, you know, did a good job of kind of being on the map despite the disadvantage. But then Bunny says, okay, I see what you're doing and I see what I need to do. Like I say, the moment he found the right moment to kind of engage on two sides, it became a very different game and a very different story to go along with it. Bunny instead, just going to shoot down a Colossus. That takes some hits, going to knock the battery down as well. Another probe coming over, not going to have a fun time. Nexus also drops. That's a lot of zealots. Actually, some of those zealots, what I thought was zealots, but actually probes. <laughs> it's still a good few zealots, and they have us around, right? So you might live for another wave of units, but you're really just prolonging the inevitable at this point. So you're kind of dreaming on this disruptor hitting the jackpot. Two or three times in a row. I don't know about you guys, but I don't know anyone who's won the lottery twi twice, and I think that's kind of what the point we're at at the moment. The hero, like he needs to, he needs like back-to-back -back amazing fights, and even then, like it's, it's basically reliant on one disruptor. Well, it, it's gone now. Now it's going to be reliant on what two colossi, and this biofor has never been able to reach them. That's fine if the zell count keeps up, but obviously trades like this are not going to let that zell count keep up either. Here, obviously accepting that he probably has to defend that upper right base because if that base goes down, his mining is gone and with no mining, this game or this series really, you know, then, well, yeah, this game does not continue. So it's going to game three, so you may as well try and fight to defend the mining because you know inevitably you're going to lose anyways, maybe by fighting you somehow, some way. Give yourself a chance, you win a fight you're not meant to or something. You know, never, never say never. You've always got to be a bit of a believer when it comes to these games of StarCraft. Four more liberators, a few more bio units going to float out in the main base orbital to the right hand side. There's no pressure on the map here, so A, why not? And B, probably get away with just not doing this. <laughs> and even he is really just a fight away from, from winning at any moment right now, although he still needs to, to find the use to get that fight. Shot sure, gets rid of the disrupt by uh, Widow Mines, and well, a couple of marauders, unfortunately, are going to be enough to hunt down Colossi. Prism is there to save this Colossus in a moment or two. Marine's showing up now as well. The Disruptor will go down. The Colossus falls. Everything pretty much falls, right? This is it. GG is called. And Bunny does get the victory screen to show up with the Terran logo. That is going to be 1-1. One, one. Down corner, we're going to have our blue Protoss player here. This is going to be Hero. Up against the red Terran, upper right-hand side, Bunny. Found the fights he needed in that previous game. Got the job done. Now we head into the game three of our series. Let's see what will happen here. One final ride in this TVP. See who gets to go into those semi-finals. Dead guy 99, thank you so much for the 59 months resub. Appreciate it. Hope you're doing well. Thank you so much for choosing to drop your sub on the channel. Appreciate it so much. Okay, we're coming up. Get that on the way. Things ready here. For a few moments. It's going to be one proxy pylon, and that means our second gateway is going down across the map, so... Big pressure actually coming in from Hero, a second gateway, really wants to get something done with this, so let's see what we can try and do. Let's get gateway coming up, the Cybercore's on the way. How Zealot is producing as well, get everything coming through for these early stages. Probably coming around. Obviously, he's just going to be looking out the front here. Bunny is playing this blind. Sent nothing across the map SCV wise, so he doesn't know about the later timing of the natural, which would have been one of the telltale signs of an extra base.
Creep coming out into the center. Factory is on its way. And that bunker coming up as well. Going to be about halfway done in a few moments. They're going to shade through as well. going to chase up. Bunker is about to complete as SCVs will pull back through here, Zealot. Stop taking a little bit of damage. The SCV pull is obviously a pretty big deal though because that's a lot of SCVs going down. Four workers already. Single Marine in that bunker. Cyclone on the way. A matter of buying time now and minimizing the losses from this point on. This is an issue. Your depot is going down. Do you want to pull SCVs to repair this? If you pull SCVs, it's going to be an insta on any SCV. I mean, this is just rough. Three Adepts are doing a lot of damage and this is just Bunny. Not, not well enough prepared for this. So many SCVs going down that that's just going to be the game decider. GG's hero 2-1 to one over Bunny, and it's a quick, brutal ending.